Hi there! My name is Benjamin Acorn and I am one of the directors of the Alberta Lepidopterist Guild and today I want to share with you my love of butterflies. So, let's go for a walk. All right, we're walking around. I'm in Edmonton. It's a beautiful day, end of April. And I think I'm gonna need to put on my sunglasses here because it's getting quite sunny out. Uh, it's about 14 degrees. And, you know, some of you, you're probably thinking, Benny, buddy, pal, uh, whatever, whatever you wanna call me, why are we doing a butterfly walk at the end of April? You know, there aren't even leaves on the trees, there aren't even flowers in the grass. Where do you expect to see butterflies? Now, some of you know this already, some of you don't, uh, but the butterfly season actually begins a lot earlier than one might expect. Uh, in this case, you know, I've been seeing them ever since the beginning of April, really. Uh, and you're not gonna get them much earlier, you're not gonna get them in March. Uh, but really, you know, it, as soon as the snows start to melt, and even before that, you can start seeing some interesting things. And the reason for that is that butterflies will overwinter. Of course, we here in sunny Alberta have our beautiful uh, Canadian winters. Uh, and what will happen is that these butterflies will overwinter at different stages of their life cycle. You know, as adults, as eggs, as pupa, as caterpillars. And so the ones that we're gonna be seeing today are the ones that have overwintered as adults, they've emerged as adults, and they don't care whether or not we got flowers or, or leaves or whatever, they're not here to feed. All they're here to do is mate and lay their eggs so we can have another generation of them later in the summer. And let me tell you, they're gonna be beautiful. All right, now the walk I'm taking you on today, we're gonna be going into the river valleys here in Edmonton. Uh, really, everything that I'm gonna talk about here is applicable to anywhere uh, that's even vaguely warm, and especially anywhere that has river valleys. Uh, but as I'm walking up this sort of sunny, nice grassy slope here, like this is a good place to find butterflies, you know? Nice sort of high altitude spots, or at least compared to the rest of the area. You know, see down there, any butterflies that are gonna come through here are gonna sweep up this slope and they're gonna sort of gather at the top here. And some butterflies, especially later in the season, the swallowtail butterflies are gonna be very competitive and they're gonna fight for these hilltop positions because those are the places that their mates are naturally going to gravitate to. Oh yeah. Now we're really getting in there. I'm descending down the path into Mackenzie Ravine and these sorts of spots, these forested spots in Edmonton and, and in any other city. I mean, again, it's all very analogous to anything that you might encounter. Just beautiful habitat for the butterflies uh, that you're gonna see at any time of year. Uh, and these are where, this is where you're gonna find the butterflies at this time of year. This is where you're gonna find the butterflies in, in June, July. August into September even a bit. Uh, and, and besides that, it's just a beautiful place to go. All right, I'm taking a stop here on my walk because what do we have here? But some of the first signs of impending foliage -tude and just the general onset of our beautiful summer weather. Uh, and that's just great. You know, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if it's visible on the screen, but there's a fly sort of zipping about just there. So, and there's, there's one on my shoe too. Uh, so, you know, the bugs are out there taking advantage of all of this. Uh, and it's just, it's just a, a sight to see after the cold, <laughs> long, dark winter. Uh, and and I, it's really just one of my favorite things. All right, so as I'm approaching 
this little opening here, this little meadow, I'm keeping my eyes open because this is where I think I might start to see things. You know, these sort of natural openings in the forested area or whatever region you are in are just perfect for finding bugs and, and, and butterflies particularly because they need to sun themselves. Uh, bugs, of course, are, are co effectively cold-blooded, although the term blood uh, does not precisely apply. Uh, and so they need... Oh, oh, yeah, I'm stirring some up right here. I don't know if that's visible, but I'll see if I can't get you a shot. All right, this is our first butterfly of the day. You can see it fanning its wings there, just beautiful. Uh, and when its wings are closed, you can see that they're very leaf-like in color and in texture. And that is not an accident. That is so that the butterfly, when in danger, can press its wings together and it can effectively drop down and meld with the brush. Uh, and you're not going to see that. The birds that might be eating this butterfly aren't going to see that. And it's just the most perfect, beautiful camouflage. All right, we've got our first butterflies of the day. Uh, we'll see if the footage turns out. The little guy that I got on camera, I believe, was an angle wing, identifiable by those great um, sort of shredded looking wings that, that blend in so beautifully on the underside. Uh, with bark and trees and whatnot, but they have that fiery orange uh, on the upper wing. And also, I don't know if it would come off in the camera, but they have a little silver mark, like a comma, uh, on their uh, sort of side, on the, on the lower under wing. Uh, and, that, and that leads the common name for a lot of them to refer to that as a comma. So there's the, the sadder comma and the, and the green comma and the gray comma. Uh, and looking at that one, it was quite brown, so I think it was a sadder comma. Oh, oh, and we've got another fellow. Let's see if I can <laughs> just catch him flitting behind me. Excellent. Now we're looking at a morning cloak butterfly, and these guys are just stunning. That pale band of, uh, of sort of cream color and then the iridescent blue, just incredible. Just incredible. Let's see if I could get us a little... Oh. And he's gone. All right, so exciting. Next butterfly. So let's see if I can come at him in such a way. Now, I don't know if you're seeing this, but you get this flash of blue. And that, if you can believe it, is the kind of butterfly that we call a blue. Uh, real incredible stuff, I know. Let's see, where has he gone here? Oh, real incredible stuff. Uh, this is almost certainly the spring azure, one of the first butterflies to come out after the initial wave of nymphalid butterflies or brushfoot butterflies. Uh, and it's a pretty little thing. And just like the morning cloak, how I was talking earlier, this little guy uh, is going to be blue because of his structure and not because of any pigments. Because very few things in nature actually have any sort of blue pigments. So you can see there, and I know that this is a spring azure because its markings on the wing, they're dark, they're si um, on the silver wing, but very blotchy. Yeah, look at that. Just a gorgeous little butterfly, tiny, but beautiful. Oh, okay, so now we've got something new. We've got flying around here, a very white butterfly, and even though I haven't gotten a good look at it, and it has now disappeared into the trees, I can tell you for sure what this is. This is a cabbage white. Cabbage white, it's a um, butterfly that came from Europe. Oh, and now am I made a fool? No, no, I think that's a cabbage white.
So, you know, just find yourself just a patch like this, really anywhere, uh, here, you know, in, in a forested area like this, any edge along clearing where there's some visible grass and some just nice spots to sun, uh, and you'll get yourself just tons. Uh, more so later in the season, but even now, you know, I'm seeing more butterflies than I can record with this camera. Uh, and who knows if any of the footage turned out, but I hope it did, so you can see how nice this all is. Alright, so it's beginning to get a little cooler, a little cloudier, so I think I'm going to pack it in for today. But I'm really excited by what I saw. We got four species, beautiful, diverse species, you know, common, sure, but <laughs> certainly welcome after the long winter that we've had. Uh, and I'm glad that I was able to share the experience of finding them with all of you. So, you know, get out there. Uh, a, a man I, I very much respect once told me that even when he's feeling at his most dour, his most grim, he never, you know, his most listless, not really feeling like going out and doing anything, he never regretted getting out into nature. And I think, you know, here in, in our uh, COVID times, when, you know, I think people in general are kind of at their most grim and their most listless and, and their most demotivated, and it might be wise to take his advice. So with that in mind and that sort of parting message, I'll see you out there.